everybody that's watching. How is everybody doing today? I just realised that I did not flip my phone the right way. So I just turned it over. So hopefully you can see everything well. So how is everybody doing today? Hope you're all doing great. Hope everybody's having a good day. I'm just kind of getting centred over here, trying to... Um, get a better view this is what we're working with today <laughs> so today we're going to do a little bit of decorating on this plant pot so as you can see I've already done some of the um, process here some prepping so um, I applied some mold I just used air drying clay and I used um, this mold from Redesign with Prima. This is a Fleur de Lis mold. So I used two of these kind of on either side of the plant pot. And then I used two of these in between them. I then used two of these impasto paints. So Mana Blue and Bottle Green. And um, I did like a little bit of blending over here as you can see um need a bit of more practice <laughs> with blending so um i haven't done it for a long time so you know this side is looking a little bit better than this one but it's okay because we're going to be applying waxes over it anyways so it won't be as noticeable um i don't do this kind of thing very often so you know it kind of comes and goes sometimes it turns out a little bit better for me sometimes it doesn't <laughs> uh, right, Catherine. Um, hello, Claire, Eileen, Moika, uh, Inge. Hello, hello, everybody. Right. So this is painted with impasto paints. So it's very like um, chalky. Impasto paints have like a chalky finish to them. I want to do almost like um, kind of like a glazing um, look with waxes so before I start adding colored waxes I need to apply a bit of clear wax first so um, this is a technique that furniture painters um, use a lot and both of these the blending technique and the um, wax application technique is something that I learned from furniture painters um, and I like to implement this in my smaller pieces quite often. <laughs> so this is just clear um, wax, clear furniture wax. Any wax will do, any brand will do for this. And I just have a natural bristle brush and I'm going to apply this all over my pot. This is going to seal the paint. And what it's also going to do, it's going to help us um, remove any of the excess coloured wax that we don't want to have on our pot. Now, when you do this kind of technique, it's important that you apply your clear wax and then um, you kind of have a window of about an hour or so until your wax starts um, setting to apply your coloured waxes. Um, if you don't get to apply your coloured wax in that window, then you might need to apply another coat of um, clear wax, or at least that's what I usually do. Um, and then go ahead and put your wax on, because when it starts setting, it won't allow you to remove um, excess wax as well. Hi Sheila, good to see you, good to see you, I feel like I haven't seen you in, in my lives before, <laughs> my twin art sister definitely, Sheila is one of those where like we definitely think the same. <laughs> my lost twin sister, so pretty, well thank you so much. Um, this is a weird view, I'm so sorry. I had the camera turned the right way around and then I turned it, turned the phone back around so that I could type in the um, 
um, like the description for today's video and then I completely forgot to turn it back to where it was so that kind of thing usually happens to me you know <laughs> I'm one of those people so this is very very simple I do really like using um, waxes for this kind of almost like staining or glazing or whatever you want to call it dark wax technique because it's very quick compared to if you want to do um, actual like glazing with um, um, either glazing medium or I usually use like acrylic paints and varnish for that kind of stuff um, it takes a lot longer because um, varnish needs time to dry um, glaze needs time to set and stuff so I personally find this technique much quicker <clears throat> Hi Angela, thank you. Uh, oh, you're from Suffolk, Virginia. Nancy, hello. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I decided to go for something a little bit out there today. You know, I don't usually <laughs> go for these kind of um, crazy color combinations, but I don't know. New year, new me, and all of that. Um, what colour paints do you have on the vase? I have these two paints on it. It's Impasto in Manor Blue and Impasto in Bottle Green. And because they are very thick paints, before I applied them onto the um, onto my pot, I watered them down a little bit. So I did a couple of sprays and then mixed them in with water. And then they kind of glide on a bit better. Right. This is taking longer than I imagined. Because <laughs> this pot is bigger than what um, our brain seems to want to think for some reason. Right. Have we gone around the whole thing? Yes, we have. And I'm going to keep this clear wax um, on hand because um, if you do find that um, you've applied your dark wax and then um, you're struggling to remove it, you can um, then go over with clear wax over the top and it kind of reactivate reactivates it and it allows you to remove it much easier. So... Um, the dark waxes that I'm going to be using are these two um, waxes here. So these are matte waxes by Finnebar from Art Alchemy line um, in charcoal black and rusty brown. Um, the idea that I have is to go with like more black over the top and brown over the bottom part of the pot. Um, I don't know, I haven't done this combination before, so it's going to be a bit of an experiment. So we'll see. So I'm going to do the black first. And I'm just going to take a brush, again, natural bristle brush. And so I just pick up a bit of wax. And I start going over the whole thing, just like this. And I'm kind of going in quite hard, because I want the wax to sit in inside all of these like creases and crevices in the moulds. Do kind of a little section at a time. And then I have some of this blue roll here. And I'm going to use it to smudge away the excess, like this. And so it kind of creates a bit more of a texture. If you want to, you can wipe it almost clean. But it kind of, you know, it is your choice as to like how much of it you want to 
um, keep. If you want to go in again, you just go in again. Once we've done our waxes, we're going to play around with mermaid effect paste because I thought, well, these are definitely mermaidy colours. If I'm ever going to do a project that uh, mermaid paste fits into, then you know this is it. This is definitely it. Hi, Teresa. Thank you. Some more black wax so I'm using matte waxes but of course if you want to add a bit more shimmer then um, you can use metallic waxes um, that's kind of your choice and um, I'm de I decided to go for like these kind of more natural tones black and or neutral rather um, black and brown but um, if you if you want to go for like a metallic and more out there look um, Finnabar has like a whole array of different colored waxes which can give you some amazing um, looks so just like this in this kind of manner I'll go over it and it's a very subtle look it doesn't give you like too much it's not very contrasty which is exactly what I want right now um, I also have some like black um, furniture wax that I often use um, in projects but it is like very black and very saturated and it gives you like really really harsh shadows so when you're adding it over molds um, it kind of it makes them look more like they are actually like you know have been stuck on or like they are um, separate pieces of hardware whereas this kind of slight shadow gives you a more natural look Almost finished with the black here. Hello from Ecuador. Oh, hello. I don't think I've ever had anybody from Ecuador before. What time is it there for you right now? <coughs> Wax adds so much depth yes definitely it's um it makes the whole thing come to life okay so that's the black done so if you compare i haven't applied any um wax here on the bottom part of this mold and like you can see how much more natural this looks compared to you know the bottom part so now I'm gonna take a clean um, brush should I use a bigger one probably just gonna use this bigger one and I'm gonna use this rusty brown now on the bottom I don't know like I said I don't know how it's gonna turn out but we'll see Take some wax. And I apply it on. <coughs> Does Finnabar ship all over? Um, yeah, they don't ship um, kind of directly from them, but there are um, retailers all across the world, different craft shops that sell some um, bits and pieces and different mediums from Finnabar. So 
um, you kind of the best way to um, to find a place to buy Finovar products would be to um, just Google the name of the product plus um, your country and because um, then Google if I Google um, something for Sweden from here from England where I am because um, you know Google has all of your like location and everything um, in its systems it still usually gives out um, shops that are in in the UK for me so best way to go about it is to um, to Google it with your location <clears throat> so what do you think black and brown black versus brown on the bottom I think they blend together really well in Ecuador oh okay so you're in the same um, time zone as the ST what is that is that California I'm so bad with time zones honestly if it wasn't for Google I wouldn't know <laughs> loving these colors together thank you Nelly lovely to um, see you Oh my god, Evelyn, you made it. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Jill, yeah, I think so too. I think they look really nice together and it kind of, it's like a really subtle detail, but it works. So we have a subtle glazed look with waxes and then I'm now going to put them to the side. And the next thing that I want to do, I don't know, tell me if I'm crazy, but I have Finnevar's Mermaid effect paste. So it's a paste that has, let me show you. Oh god, they are gorgeous. So all of this like um, opaque stuff that you can see, once it's dry, it um, turns... Um, I'll show you, I have a swatch. It turns clear, so this is Mermaid that I have swatched out here on black and on white. And so like, as you can see, all of the opaque stuff has turned... Um, clear and so it's it's like this really really beautiful um, paste with like lots of shimmer and glitter and even pieces of like foil and stuff and so what I want to do is I want to put this mermaid paste all across this rim this top rim and then hmm maybe even on the bottom rim is that too much? Should I just do the top rim? You tell me. You tell me. What should I do? Just the top with mermaid paste or top and the bottom? And then I also, in the end, I want to add a little bit of um, different coloured wax over the top of the moulds. Um, not sure yet. Maybe white pearl? Um, but yeah, just the top or the bottom? Or both? Where is good, um, good taken down the Christmas tree? Oh, interesting. See, we haven't taken ours down yet. Usually we would, but this year, you know. <laughs> well, I say this year. This year and last, last year, nowadays. Uh, taking a 
quick break from taking down Christmas decorations. Right, okay, so you too. Hello from Hungary. Hi, Kathleen. Do both. Just the top. Do the top first, then let's value it. I decided. Yeah, me neither. Right, okay, let's do just the top for now then. So I'm just going to use a brush for this and I'm going to pick it up and smudge it on. Um, you're not going to get a very like even finish. There are going to be bits and pieces that kind of stick out in places. So it is an effect paste, so it, it has texture to it. gonna go over like this and look at it it's so shiny and sparkly and just the magpie that lives inside of me is just having a real good time right now Train decorations all taken down and packed away today. No, it's not an epiphany, but it seemed the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it, but then we didn't really have the time. And I don't know, I come from a place where um, you usually like only put your Christmas tree up like late in December, right before the new year. Um, like a lot of people don't celebrate Christmas because different religions. Um, so you celebrate the new year and then um, you have uh, like the Russian Orthodox um, Christmas on the 7th of January. So you kind of have the Christmas tree through there. And then um, if you are a part of like a Russian community, they also celebrate something called um, Old New Year. Um, which is on the 14th of January, so it stays up un uh, until at least the 14th of January or longer. So like in my house, um, growing up, <laughs> Christmas trees, well, we always had like natural Christmas trees and um, they usually stayed up until all of the needles had fallen down, <laughs> which was usually by like February, March time. So like for me, it's a bit of a new thing that I have to adjust to, you know, living in the UK. <coughs> You're green with Teresa. Tomorrow for you. Um, you stick with both. <laughs> Just feel like I if I keep putting it off, I'll never get it right. Well, so leave it. <laughs> Who, who even cares anymore? What is the point? What is the, what is the point in having like set dates or calendars or anything um, in this current climate? You know, it's all just one really, 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 really long day. <laughs> Just still applying it on. Need to concentrate because I keep putting it on like in different thicknesses throughout. I want it to be a bit more consistent. <coughs> All stripped but greenery still up. Ah. <laughs> like the way you think. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Oh, and then I remember when I was a kid, there was a few times where um, our Christmas tree would like root and just not um, get rid of the needles at all. So um, it is all right. Sad story. Um, we had a budgie and it was like um, February or March time or something like that. Um, we had a budgie and it was playing in the kitchen on a mirror and I was getting ready for school and then my, um, and I cut my finger or something like that and my mum was like, um, 
go into the kitchen to uh, get like scissors or something to uh, put a bandage on my finger or something and then turned out that the budgie had flown off off of the kitchen floor uh, off off the table and onto the floor and so you know accident and the poor thing was um in shock and it flew into the christmas tree because the christmas tree was still up like that's how i remember how long we kept our christmas tree up. <laughs> is this is this normal anybody else has like tragic stories from they were seven years old like that to remember like life events <laughs> or how long things to uh, things used to stay up for <clears throat> same here put up everything night before christmas so i won't take it down before late january yes i agree with you i agree with you catherine that's that's the way we like him leave it up especially i don't know i feel like this year god we need all of the happiness and lights and everything that we can that we can get i keep saying this year even though it's only just started, but you know what I mean. Okay. So I've gone around the rim. And, right, let me show you. So it's kind of starting to dry up in a few places um, where it's not as thick. But of course you can still see like the opaque bits in it. I think... I'm just going to leave it at the top and then instead of going over the um, the bottom rim I'm just going to add more to this to this top bit here just kind of cake it on so that when it's dry and it's going to take a while to dry for this but again, as always, um, once it's ready, I'm going to take some pictures and post them in the group so you can see what the final result looks like. I'm going to cake it on so that when it dries, it's going to almost like crystallize, if that makes sense. And I think that could be a look. What do you think? Is it going to be a look? <clears throat> How are you delicious looking pastries? Oh, okay, that's for Catherine, not for me. Hi, Peggy. One year our house was burglarized and all of our Christmas presents were stolen right from under our tree. The thieves left, all, left a trail of wrapping paper from our house all the way to their front door. Oh, wow. Well, that's a story to remember, that's for sure. At least they weren't, like, very smart. Thief at their front door, well, I take it, I don't know. How far did they live? Were they your neighbours or something? Did you, did you catch them? Did they get what they deserve? I'm invested, Nelly, you need to t tell me more. <clears throat> what is the product on the rim? Um, this is um, Mermaid Effect Paste by Finnebar from Art Extravagance Line. So this is also from Prima, so if you're in this group you know Redesign with Prima is a line mainly for um, like upcyclers and furniture and stuff and Finnabar is more of like a home decor um, craft line but these products can definitely be used for bigger projects as well if you wanted to use them uh, mm. uh, 
Broadly, after Christmas, the presents taken and they came back early February. Jesus. They definitely weren't smart. They only lived on the next, um, on the next block down. The police arrested them Christmas morning. Well, Merry Christmas to them. At least they got what they deserved, you know. Sorry that happened to you, Nelly. That must have been like. Wait, did you say how old he was? Um, oh, you didn't say, no. But like, still, even if you're not a child, that must still be like so traumatizing. But also at the same time, how can you be, like, if you're if you're gonna do and go and do something like that, at least be smart enough to not leave a trail of wrapping paper to your front door. Hmm. He was about seven. Oh wow. Yeah, I can't imagine what it must have been like for you as a child. Right, okay. Put it on. All around the room. Now I'm gonna have to leave it to dry. And then before I go, I think, I don't know, I picked out, before the live stream, I picked out white pearl or brushed iron for, um, for the tops of the moulds. And I think with the mermaid paste, I think white pearl is going to look the best, isn't it? That's my thinking anyways. So... What should I use? White pearl or brushed iron? Which one would you like to see? And while we're deciding, this is what we're looking at. So as you can see, like these bits here are starting to dry up a little bit now. And then was like once you've done a planned pot like this um, I definitely wouldn't recommend planting anything inside like directly inside of the pot um, use a nursery pot for your plant that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a nursery pot inside and then you know the plant is gonna sit inside there um, because well first of all it doesn't have any drainage on the inside but also um, if the plant is directly inside and you want to like, sp you know, spritz it with water or, um, you know, do any kind of, um, or like run it under the shower or stick it outside for the rain or do anything that like plant people do, um, you know, this, um, this won't do well in like these kind of harsh, um, you know, conditions. Um, so unless you wanted to seal it with some really really tough varnish um, which you know is gonna be fine then like um, if I hadn't used waxes I would have probably sealed this with um, yacht varnish like something that's waterproof um, really waterproof but since we have waxes over the top yacht varnish is just gonna um, roll off of it so wax is gonna have to do uh. Definitely white pearl. Okay, good, good. White pearl, yep. We forgot the bottom. I don't know. See, um, Catherine, maybe, you know, what? I'll see I'll see what it's looking like once it's all dry. And then if it's looking a bit lonely, I might add the bottom and then you'll see it in the, um, in the pictures. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll see. Right, so, white pearl it is. So this is from Finnabar's um, latest release, fall release, um, white pearl, and this is metallic wax. All right, so I'm gonna have to be careful with this kind of, ah, I said careful and got my hand into it straight away. Right, and then I'll just use my finger for this because I just want to go over the tops. 
like this. If you wanted to go deeper into the mould and add more wax kind of sitting on the inside of the mould then you can use a brush. But I find that my um, just using a finger when you want to brush over the tops is like the best um, the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I think the pearl is gonna look really, really nice with the um, with the mermaid effect paste once it's dry. And you know me, like I was at first, of course, I was tempted to use some gold over the top, which would look nice, but but also like I think. White pearl is starting to become like my second favorite after vintage gold. It's just a beautiful, pretty color and it's so shiny and it is like white. It's not silver, it's like really, really bright. Because, um, like, if, if I had to choose between silver and gold, I will nine times out of ten go gold. But when it's white, you know, it's a little bit different. Okay. We've gone over the tops. There we go. I'm just going to clean off my hands. So there it is, the finished result. So we used um, blue and green paint on the top and the bottom, um, redesigned molds here with air dry clay, um, some black wax and some brown wax. So black wax on the top, black um, brown one, ah, can't talk again. <laughs> black wax on the top, brown wax on the bottom and mermaid paste, mermaid effect paste on the rim and a white pearl over the top of the moulds. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this little live stream and enjoyed kind of following along. Um, I will next be um, live here next week on Tuesday and we're going to start a uh, a project that is going to last a couple live streams, so two, three, maybe. We'll try and do it in two, uh, but it will probably be three. <laughs> and it's going to be a jewellery box, you know, one of those that um, you either have one of those or you know somebody that has one of those, like really, um, what is it, like 80s, 90s style. And so we're going to upcycle it and turn it into something that looks a little bit more modern and attractive and really pretty so look out for um an announcement of that of course i'm going to post you know a little reminder and yeah thank you so much for tuning in and i will see you guys next time bye